This conference will now be recorded. Hi, this is Mary McCarley, the Health Education Content Specialist with Goodhart Wilcox and the co-author of their Middle School Health Textbook. I was a health teacher for 15 years in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, and I now provide professional development and training for our middle and high school health programs. This presentation is titled, A Teacher's Toolbox to Standard-Based Grading. You will have access to this PowerPoint to go back and take a closer look at the assessments that I present today. All the standard-based grading activities and assessments that you'll see in today's presentation come from our 2021 copyright skills-based middle and high school health program. Our comprehensive version includes the two additional chapters on sexual health. At the end of today's session, you'll have an opportunity to sign up for complimentary resources, including access to our online platform. Before I begin sharing the resources, I'd like to highlight our award-winning author team. All the skills-based and standard-based grading activities and assessments within our program were developed by our award-winning teacher team, many of whom are current or former Shape America District and National Teachers of the Year. I'll provide a brief description as to how standard-based grading benefits teachers and students, and then provide several examples. So first, standard-based grading provides meaning to grades. Students understand why they receive each grade and the breakdown of how they did on each standard, rather than receiving a vague letter with no explanation. Number two, keep students and teachers accountable. With specific learning standards expected from the beginning of class, the teacher knows what they are expected to teach. With the use of consistent formative assessments, teachers and students know how well they are doing on these learning targets and can adjust as needed to ensure proficient understanding by the end of the course. Number three, better feedback for improvement. With grades, with grades broken up into different learning standards, students can immediately see which areas of learning they need to improve upon. Teachers can also use this information to improve instruction. If they see that the majority of the class has a lack of understanding in one standard, they can focus on that standard more moving forward. And lastly, provides information to differentiate instruction. With learning standards and frequent formative assessments, the teacher knows which students are on each level for each standard. Using this information, they can differentiate instruction and give different leveled assignments to differentiate groups of students based on the proficiency level they are at. And in today's session, I'll be showing you some of those leveled assignments um, that you could use or get ideas to create your own. So let's begin looking at examples of assessments. Remember, you will have access to this PowerPoint to go back and take a closer look at the activities. This first example is from our middle school program. Each of the eight national standards have performance indicators. I created a formative assessment for each of the performance indicators leveled one through four with three showing proficiency. This example is from performance indicator 4.8.1, apply verbal and nonverbal communication skills to enhance health. You can see on the left side, these are the directions for the teacher. Depending on the performance indicator, individual students' needs, class size, and other factors, you could choose option one or option two directions for the teacher. With option one, uh, teachers will start all students at a level three, which is the assessment to show proficiency. Based on how well they do, they could proceed to a level four extending, or if they don't show proficiency, they would go back to level one or two. If they drop to level one or two, they would work their way back up to level three, showing proficiency. Option two of the teacher's directions would allow all students to start at a level one and work their way up. This option would require more feedback by the teacher and may be time consuming. 
On the right-hand side, you will see the assessment scale for all the formative assessments and the conversion chart for those using traditional grading. Here is an example of level one assessment. You can see students will, would show very basic background knowledge by identifying the key term and definition. Level two would require greater background knowledge of the learning target or skill. In the level two assessment, students would read the following scenarios to determine whether the message being conveyed involves verbal or nonverbal communication and whether the messages are an effective or ineffective use of communication. At the bottom of all the leveled assignments, you can see there's a place for teacher feedback. In this level three formative assessment, students will read the communication exchange between Juan and his parent and rewrite the you statements to I statements to convey effective verbal communication. Students will also change his nonverbal communication to convey effective nonverbal communication. Um, as I mentioned, you can see at the bottom that there is a place for teachers to provide their feedback. And successful completion of the level three assessment will show proficiency of the learning target and applied skills. Now, for those students who do show proficiency, they have the opportunity to extend with the level four assessment and quote, earn an A. In level four assessments, students will be able to, um, or the level four uh, assessments will, it will allow for more real life application of the learning target. And in this activity, students will have a meaningful conversation with a family member, a trusted adult, a friend, a partner. And you can see in the directions here, I've provided examples of conversations um, such as managing stress, family expectations on dating, alcohol, or technology use. Now, during the conversation, the student will be intentional about using effective verbal and nonverbal communication. And after the conversation, students will reflect and analyze their verbal and nonverbal communication, and the trusted adult will sign the pledge. So you can see here, these are the questions that would go along the student would respond to after. So for example, number three, did you use passive, assertive, or aggressive communication and defend your answer? And provide at least three uh, examples of I statements you used or could have used during the conversation. And then students will also, number six, reflect on their nonverbal communication during the conversation and provide examples of both positive and or negative um, forms of nonverbal communication that they use. And then once again, you can always see at the bottom, the teacher has a place to provide feedback. And I'm now gonna show you another example of a formative assessment from our middle school program. And this one is from Performance Indicator 3.8.3, as you can see here. Um, determine the accessibility of products that enhance health. And as you can see, there are directions for the teacher, an assessment scale, and a conversion chart, similar to the last example that I showed. And in this level one assessment, students will reflect on the last health product that they used. Um, and in the space provided, they're gonna brainstorm factors that would make a health product, product easy or difficult to access for a middle school student. And in the level two assignment, they will read the following scenarios to determine if the health product is easily accessible for the student in the scenario to obtain. And then they're gonna defend their answer as well. So here's the level three assessment, and don't forget level three is the one that shows proficiency. So students are gonna review the following acne medication advertisement, and also make sure to read that fine print. And they're gonna imagine that they're interested in purchasing this product. Students will examine the acne medication advertisement and then respond to the question below to determine the accessibility of this product. And then once again, teachers can provide the feedback. 
Now, for those students who were able to show proficiency, they could move on to the level four, which once again would be extending and, quote, earn an A for this formative assessment. Um, so in this assignment, students are going to think about health products that they could use to enhance their physical, mental, or emotional, or social health. And they're going to choose one product. And then they're going to research the product to determine how easily accessible it would be for that student to obtain. And then they would answer the following question. So they're going to name their product. They're going to provide a brief description of their product and how it could enhance their health. And then look at things, and they, they're going to need to do some research and look at things like age restrictions as to if they could buy it or maybe they would need to ask their parents to buy it for, for them. Um, and also the cost of the product and is the cost an obstacle for them? How, like where or how can this product be purchased? If it's purchased online, would they need a credit card to do this? Describe any additional obstacles to obtaining this health product and what factors would make um, this product easy to access and then based on all their research and the accessibility of obtaining this product do they plan to either buy it or ask their parent or guardian to buy this product for them and how would it enhance their health so remember in that level four you're really trying to make that connection to real world application so now i i'm going to provide an example of a summative assessment from our middle school program so I have created summative assessments for each of the national health education standards and the national sexuality education standards. So here is an example of a summative assessment for standard four. Students will demonstrate the ability to use interpersonal communication skills to enhance health and avoid or reduce health risks. Once again, you can see the directions for the teacher, including the conversion chart. Students, student work, will provide a brief description of the summative assessment. However, if the assessment does not meet the needs of your students or a few students in class, I always provide an adaptation idea one and an adaptation idea two. And there's a brief description of each of those, but we'll take a closer look at all three of these assessments. So this is the, 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 the main assignment for students, or what we called earlier student work here. So in this assignment, students with a partner will plan and perform a role play that uses communication skills to enhance health and avoid or reduce health risks. So in part one, or step one with a partner, they're going to plan the story, and they're going to need to choose a health topic that they're interested in to be the focus of their role play. Step two, they're going to write the script together. And they're going to, as you can see from the bullets, they're going to focus on the effective verbal communication skills, effective nonverbal communication skills, um, refusal and or negotiation, healthy conflict resolution, and how to ask for help. And then step three, they're going to practice the role play. And in step four, they would perform the role play. And we did include the um, assessment scale uh, for this uh, summative assessment as well. So in this one, students would be doing this in class with a partner. So we know that maybe not all teachers would have time to do this in class or in at least in our current situation, um, there's probably a lot of you guys who are not seeing your students in class at this not time, but rather doing remote learning. So adaptation number one will take the same activity, but the adaptation is to allow students to do it outside of school um, with a family member, with a friend, with a sibling as well. And then they would, um, when they perform the role play, they could video it and provide video evidence. Now let's look at adaptation two. So adaptation two would require the teacher to meet one-on-one -on -one with students to assess their verbal and nonverbal communication skills. Now the teacher will select one scenario from each category and the student's not gonna know what scenario that the teacher would choose ahead of time. And the students would respond using effective verbal and nonverbal communication skills. So we really wanted to provide um, 
different activities for different students. We know that not all students learn the same. And while you may have like the majority of your class doing one assessment, you may have one or two students where this assessment would work better for them. So let's look at another example of a summative assessment. And this summative assessment example will be from the National Sexuality Education Standards, Standard 6 on goal setting related to preventing unintended pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections. You can see that the format is very similar with student work, adaptation idea one, adaptation idea two. So I'll actually show you now the three examples of assessments that could be used. So this is the main assessment, and in this assessment, students will create a digital or paper vision board showing evidence of the criteria listed. And you can see the criteria listed here, which is going to be from the performance indicators of the standards. And then after completion, the students would write a thoughtful essay responding to the following questions that you can see here. So explain how influences at home, at school, and in your community could impact your progress towards meeting your goal. Are these positive or negative influences? What types of support do you need to make sure you reach your goal? And what life circumstances, if any, could cause you to change your SMART goal? I've also included the assessment scale as well, um, if you needed an example of how to assess students. So if um, the first assessment did not meet your student's needs, here is adaptation idea one. And so for this assessment, students will write a long-term SMART goal, as you can see here. Now remember, this is gonna be related to, um, to eliminating or reducing the risk of unintended pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections. So students would write a long-term SMART goal, now they're going to step two, they're gonna create an action plan and they're going to develop action steps. And then in step three, they're gonna reflect on their action plan. So remember, this is adaptation idea one. And then we, for adaptation idea two, I wanted to um, make it less personal. So if you had students who, who felt uncomfortable either sharing this information with their teacher or, or coming up with this plan, or you felt like this was a more appropriate uh, assessment for your students, I just wanted to make sure teachers had as many um, ideas of assessments as possible. So this time, in order to make it less personal, um, I came up with a scenario one and a scenario two. So rather than the students talking about their personal SMART goal, and their action steps and their reflection, they will be reflecting based on a scenario and, and creating this for a person in a scenario. So that was adaptation idea two. So I have a few more summative assessments to share and these come from our high school health program. And I know that you may not be able to read all the directions and the activity requirements, but I just wanted to remind you that you do have access to this PowerPoint, so you could go back and take a closer look at it. So once again, in the teacher instructions, just look for the options for differentiation, and this chapter performance uh, task will allow students to practice standard four interpersonal communication. So here is the student um, assessment. And in this assessment, students will demonstrate assertive and effective communication, and they will use communication to resolve a conflict. So this performance assessment is going to be related to assertive communication. So they would read the following three scenarios, and then just choose one, state which scenario they chose, and what communication style was used in the scenario, and they had to explain their answer. Now, we know all students don't learn the same, so it is nice to provide that option. So students will have the, the opportunity to do either option one, is to write a scenario or script. So in this one, they're gonna rewrite the scenario to show how they could respond using assertive communication style. And in their um, script, they are gonna need to use I statements. 
or if students learn by um, performing or by uh, verbal, um, the, ver the, the use of verbal communication, they would probably like the option two, which is going to be that role play. So they can act out the scenario to show how they would respond using assertive communication. And once again, um, they would need to use I statements as part of their verbal communication. So Diane Farthing, who um, is our high school co-author, and she's also the Shape America 2020 Western District Teacher of the Year. She was um, very uh, intentional about creating these rubrics based on which option the student chose. So you can see here, this is actually the option. If students chose option one, you'll have a standard-based grading assessment for option one with exceeding, proficient, developing, and beginning. Or if they chose option two, you will also have a assessment scale for students as well. And then right here, you can see the final score as exceeding, proficient, developing, or beginning. And I know this is a lot to look at, so just remember you do have um, access to this PowerPoint. So if you wanna go back and kind of take a closer look, um, you could go back and take a closer look. Or if you have an activity that you're currently doing that's allowing students to practice assertive communication, but you were just kind of looking for a, um, an assessment scale or a rubric to go with that activity, you may wanna kind of come back and take a closer look at this as well. So let's look at another performance task. This one is gonna be responding to violence and will actually allow students to practice either standard five or standard four. So they could choose which one they wanted to do. So for this performance assessment, students are going to first, they're gonna read the following three scenarios and they're just going to choose one. So they're gonna choose one scenario and then they get to decide if they would rather practice the skill of decision-making or interpersonal communication. So for those students who want to practice decision-making, they're gonna choose option one, and they're gonna use the steps in the decision-making process to make a decision about how to best handle this situation. And remember, this situation is gonna be one of the following three scenarios that they chose. And then they will go through the decision-making process. They're gonna um, define the decision or problem. They're gonna explore the alternatives and options. Then they're going to consider the consequences, coming up with the pros and cons of each alternative that they describe here. Then they're going to identify the best alternative and they can rank them from one to five. They're going to decide and act and evaluate. Now, for those students who would prefer to work on the skill of interpersonal communication, they would choose option two. So they are gonna write a script determining what they would say to the person in this situation, and they would also need to use their I statements. And I just wanted to make sure, I know this is way too much to look at, but just wanted you to know that in the PowerPoint, depending on which, um, the, which option that your students chose, as a teacher, you could have, um, you would have access to both the, Option number one, assessment scale, which is the one related to decision making, or option number two, which is the one related to the script and interpersonal communication. So here are some additional rubrics to measure skills. And I know measuring skills is not always easy. And and I wasn't gonna go into a lot of detail, but I just figured um, if you had access to the PowerPoint, you could go back and kind of take a closer look. So um, this is, if you have an advocacy pro project and you just kind of need an example of a way of assessing students and their advocacy skills, um, here is an example of a rubric for that or an assessment scale using standard-based grading.
So I wanted to share, this is actually one of my favorite projects I do with my students. So I wanted to share this one with you. And you may already have an advocacy campaign project that you do with your students. So maybe just seeing that assessment scale or going back and looking at it could be really helpful. But if you don't have an advocacy campaign project you do with your students, I just wanted to share this one for you. And this is actually one that I created for the middle school program. So this is a small group advocacy campaign and I tell my students that imagine that you've been chosen to work in a small group and to campaign within your school to share a message and raise awareness about a topic so the first thing the students are going to need to do is they're going to need to choose a topic and I tell them that as they're talking about it think about their school community what their needs of their school community are what they may be passionate about and decide on a topic and they will record their topic here Next, they're going to start to do research on this topic. So they're going to research right here. You can see accurate, up-to-date, valid sources to learn more about their topic. And then they will record their notes. Over here, they will talk to the staff members, uh, faculty members, administrators, their teachers to learn more about the current actions being done at their school to address this issue and record their notes here. Now it's time for students to create a campaign goal. So they're going to respond to the following questions to create their campaign goal. Who, um, who are you trying to reach and influence? What message do you want to convey? Why is this message important? And how will it benefit the school community? And what specific goal or goals do you hope to achieve? Now it's time for the group to create a product. So as a small group, they're going to discuss how they want to raise awareness um, for their campaign. And then they're going to come up with a product. What I've done here is I've just created the, the requirements or what needs to be in their product. But as a team, the students can choose their type of product. So we, this is a choice board. If you've not seen a choice board before, it allows students choice on how they want to display a product. And we know that not all students learn the same. Some students love making posters, while others may learn by speaking and would be more likely to choose this video public service announcement for the morning announcement. Some of your students are very, very tech savvy, and they would rather create memes or create a series of social media posts. Um, so this is just a project choice board. In the middle, I always, choose, uh, I always include student choice, but they do have to get permission on their product. So students would create their product, and now it's time to get ready to launch that campaign in step five. So before launching the campaign, students are going to respond to the following questions. Why is this the best product option for your campaign? What do you need to make your campaign possible? Who do you need to make it possible? And how will you reach your audience? What's your timeline? And how will you determine success? And once they've answered those questions, it's time for them to start campaigning. So we know that every school is different. Um, some of your schools may love the idea of students campaigning within the school. And if your school does not, either allow it or you just maybe have to jump through way too many hoops to make it happen, maybe just consider a health fair where your students are allowed to, um, to gather, whether it's in a multi-purpose room, a gym. Um, but as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm thinking um, due to COVID-19, um, maybe this may not, it, we just may need to get creative. Maybe it's a virtual health fair. And then step six, they're going to reflect after they've had a chance to campaign. So were you successful in implementing a meaningful campaign? What obstacles did you encounter and how did you overcome these? And what did you learn from doing this campaign? So I just wanted to share a few more. Um, and these were um, uh, assessment rubrics that were created by Diane Farthing for our high school program. Um, uh, measuring skills can, is not always easy, and I think she did a phenomenal job of creating these um, assessment scales. So if you're looking for one to assess refusal skills, here is a great um, assessment scale. And for active listening, here's another one. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. I hope this presentation was helpful in providing you ideas for standard-based grading assessments. And I know it was a lot of information, um, 
But just remember you do have a copy of this PowerPoint to go back and take a closer look. And, but if you would like a complimentary copy of our textbook and or online access, just email me and I will direct you to your educational consultant and he or she will reach out to you and provide those complimentary resources. So I really do appreciate your time. I hope you got some ideas um, and strategies and assessment, um, assessment ideas from this presentation. So thanks so much for your time and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.